In my first example, I'm going to look at questions 5 and 6 from Paul Forrester's calculus book. It's a section 8.2, by the way. Um, in these problems, I'm being given graphs, and I'm supposed to write the first and second derivative number lines for those graphs. So the big thing here, you can look at a first derivative. The derivative tells you the slope of the tangent line at a given point. Okay, so really it's telling you the change in that line. And on the number line, I don't care what that slope actually is. All I'm really focusing on is whether or not that slope is positive or negative. So you can see here, uh, it's a negative slope for a while. I do want to plot certain points on the graph. Um, the Forrester book usually plots the endpoints. Uh, they did not make it real clear where the endpoints are on this graph. It's kind of between 0 and 1 and, and something past 2, so I'm not going to plot the endpoints. However, the things that you want to make sure you plot, you want to plot the critical values. And remember, the critical values occur where the derivative is 0 or where the derivative is undefined. And if you notice here, we never have a, a 0 derivative because there's a cusp or a corner is what this is often called when the straight lines come together. Um, and so that's the place where the slope is undefined. So I'm going to plot an x value of 2 on my axis here, and I'm going to note that the derivative is undefined there. The slope of the tangent line is, is undefined, okay? There's, there's not any set derivative value you can have there because you can have different possible slopes against that cusp or corner. On this side, notice up to negative 2, it's a negative slope. So I say it's negative. A lot of times you kind of model that by drawing a downward sloping line. Increasing, so it's a positive slope, and it's an upward sloping line on the other side. Um, for the second derivative, remember the second derivative talks about concavity, which is the change in the slope, or the change in the change of your function. Um, and basically, for example, normally I can just have a graph going upwards. If it is increasing in slope, getting steeper, the change in the slope would be positive. Meanwhile, if the change in the slope is getting less, even if it was still going up, uh, that would be considered to be concave down, so it's kind of curved downwards. It's decreasing the increase, if you want to think about it in that sense. Uh, notice in this case, that's a straight line. It's not curved either concave up or concave down. Um, the change in the change is just zero. The slope's not changing. Um, so basically, um, the same thing as before. I would plot the point where the second derivative would be undefined. And um, in this case, normally you would put, for example, if it's concave up, a plus, and then maybe a little upward curve like that. Uh, but it's a, zero, it's a zero second derivative. So I can put that there and that there, and, and that's basically all I have. So just telling me that I have a straight line in those different sections. Uh, for the second graph here, again, I want to plot places where the derivative is zero or where it's undefined. Uh, notice we don't have a, a minimum value. We don't have something like this where you're going to have a a place that has a tangent line with a slope of zero. However, I do have a place where I have a vertical slope, and that would be an undefined slope. And again, that happens when x is equal to 2. And technically, that's an infinite slope. So Forrester will put a little infinity sign there to show the difference between that and an undefined slope. Um, notice the graph slopes downward on this side. OK, so that's a negative slope sloping down. Interestingly, I don't have any kind of maximum or minimum value here. It slopes down, goes vertical, starts to slope down again. So it's still negative, still going down. As a result, I don't have a maximum or minimum value because I have to have a change in the derivative value from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay. Um, down here for the second derivative. Second derivative has to do with the concavity. Okay. Notice that the concavity is down here. The concavity is up here. Uh, as a result, we have a change in concavity at that point. Uh, that's a place where the second derivative value would be undefined. So I'm going to plot a point at 2. Okay, And that would be an undefined second derivative there. Um, and basically what's going to end up happening is uh, that's concave down, so we would say it's negative and sloping down. Uh, the graph is going to be concave up, okay, it's curving upward here, so concave down there, concave up there. There's a change in the concavity, and so as a result, uh, this is a point of inflection. Your book just puts a little PI there for point of inflection. Uh, 
typically most problems will do, you'll have some kind of chart to fill in or a question asking you where the point of inflection takes place. Uh, of course, if you need the actual point, you need to substitute that back into the function. Uh, that's the basic idea of filling out one of these number lines based off a graph. This is problem number 13 from section 8.2 in Forrester's book. And this time Forrester is giving you the number lines for the first derivative and the second derivative, and he's asking you to plot the graph. Uh, in particular, if you line this up with your actual graph, it makes it a little bit easier. You're really looking at two things at the same time, and, and you can decide how to do this. Some people can kind of look at all the information and think about whether or not the graph goes up and down, how it's curved, all of those different types of things at the same time. Some people prefer to do it in steps. Okay, so for example, I noticed that the graph increases from, and by the way, you'll notice I haven't marked the y-axis here. I don't have an actual point that this graph has to pass through. Um, so basically we know how it increases and decreases and we'll get the general shape, but we don't know what those actual functional values are. Uh, but I know that the graph increases basically going over to uh, this point right here. Uh, you'll notice that there is an infinite slope, okay? And then you notice that it's going downhill. So this graph basically is going to be hitting some kind of uh, a cusp, that type of thing here. Um, uh, but it's approaching an infinite uh, value. So basically I'm going to go over here to negative 2 and I'm going to have my graph increasing, okay? It's going upwards, then it starts going downwards and continues going downwards all the way to zero. So the graph's going to kind of do something like this maybe and then we notice that uh, it has a slope of zero. So it basically kind of levels out here briefly and then it starts going downhill again. Okay, something like that. Now, I can come back in. Uh, the second part of this, the second derivative tells me about the concavity, the change in the change, or the change in the slope of the graph. And so you can see that the graph is supposed to be concave up as it goes along here um, up to negative 2. So concave up, of course, is going to be kind of sloped like that. So really my graph is doing something maybe kind of like that, where you can see it's concave up. Notice I'm supposed to have an infinite slope there, so we've got maybe a, a cusp, that kind of thing. Uh, notice that it says there is no point of inflection, okay? So uh, this is a case here where the concavity stays, uh, notice the concavity here actually stays uh, positive uh, over here as well. So we continue with positive concavity, so the graph is going to do something like this. So we do not have a change in concavity here uh, over to that point. And then I'm going to continue with this. Notice, let's see, when we get to zero, it says there's a slope of zero. So the graph has kind of leveled out here by zero. Um, notice that the second derivative is also zero there. It says there's a point of inflection. When there's a point of inflection, there's supposed to be a change in concavity. Notice it goes from positive to negative. So the graph is going down, but it's no longer curving upwards. It's curving down something kind of like that. So that's what my graph is going to look like based off those tables. And again, we don't know the functional values, so I've not marked those on the y-axis. Um, sometimes you're going to be given a point that it has to pass through, and sometimes you won't be. This is problem 18 from Forrester's book, section 8.2. Um, basically, Forrester is asking me to draw the graph of function f using the graph of f prime. And in addition to that, he tells me that f of 1 is equal to 3. If you remember, because when you take the antiderivative, you normally get a plus c, uh, or at least when you take an indefinite integral. Uh, we don't actually know what constant values may have been involved in the original equation. So all we can see is what the slopes would look like and that kind of thing, unless we're told a point that the graph actually has to pass through. So uh, the graph has to start going through the point 1, 3, which is right here. Uh, remember what the derivative graph tells you. It tells you the slope at different points. And so, for example, notice here, all of these values are negative 2. Um, basically tells me that my graph is going to have slopes of negative 2, um, starting here, going all the way over to that x value. Um, now, a lot of times, this is kind of imprecise, but I actually know what the slopes are here. Uh, because the slopes are negative 2 all the way along here, uh, I really just need to plot a line that has a slope of negative 2. So I'm going to go down 2 over 1, uh, down 2 over 1, and then down 2 over 1, and that's going to take me over to uh, about right here. So my graph is going to do something kind of like this. Uh, it's starting here, and it's going like that. 
So that whole thing has a slope of negative 2 because the whole derivative has a value of negative 2 all the way across. Now, it's undefined here, but remember a derivative can be undefined, for example, at a cusp or a corner. So that doesn't necessarily affect anything. I don't have to have a, a removal of this continuity in my graph or an asymptote or something like that necessarily. Um, now, if you take a look at this slope, and again, you've got to be careful. These are all slopes here. So what's happening is at this x value, the graph is going to have a slope of about 2. Okay? Meanwhile, at this x value, uh, the functional value is at about 1. It's going to have a slope of about 1. Um, somewhere around here, it's going to have an, a, a slope of about 0. Okay? Then it's going to have a negative slope. And so I need to in, kind of incorporate all that. Uh, what I'll usually do is I'll plot some, some little tiny slopes to kind of show what's happening here. So I need a, a slope of about 2 right here. So that, that might look something kind of like this. And by this x value, so the graph's going to be moving up this way. Um, by this point, I need the slope to only be about 1. Uh, so 1 the slope might look a little bit more like that. And then by this point, the slope needs to be 0. So basically, my graph has kind of leveled out at that x value. And then the slope needs to be negative 1 at this point. So uh, it's going to be leveling out, but I know it's going to be getting negative. So you know, it's going to get down to about negative 1 there. So loosely speaking, and again, if you think about it, that is a straight line that, if graphed, would be a, a function in y equals mx plus b form, a straight line, uh, we know that the antiderivative will be a secondary degree equation. So it should look kind of like a parabola, which is the kind of thing that you can see here. Again, you can see my cusp over here, which is why the derivative is undefined at that x value. Okay, I've got something that looks like that. Um, and then for the last part, notice we have a constant slope again, okay, and, and the slopes are all one along here. So everything should have a slope of one from that point on. Once again, it's undefined here, so we're going to have a cusp or a corner that takes place. And basically, I'm going to do a rise and a run of, I want to hear about negative two, rise and a run of one, uh, rise and a run of one, you know, something, something kind of like that. And that is what my graph would look like based off the original derivative function. So again, if you're not sure, you can go back and look at some individual points and check and, and see if they make sense. Uh, so, you, you know, negative 2 slope, the function has a value of negative 2. Negative 2 slope here, the function has a value of negative 2. Undefined cusp, okay? Here we've got a slope of about 1. You can see that this thing is sloping about 1 somewhere in this point. Slope of about 0 here, we've got a slope of about 0 here. I was maybe a little bit off to the side, but general idea. Cusp here, we can see the derivative is undefined. So you can see that this should have followed the relationship that we saw in the original graph.